try this. Thank you, Beverly. Beautiful. Remember, during Zoom worship, we ask everybody to remain muted. Uh, you can share your video or not. It's optional, but we love to see your smiling faces. Also, remember, we're recording this service and we'll post it later on YouTube. Use your chat room to ask questions, express prayers, and love to one another. And remember, as we've already experienced, this will not be perfect. Please extend grace. I invite you now to gather together to worship and send yourselves in God's spirit as we watch and listen and follow the directions in this prelude, in this call to worship. Our series ends with a reaffirmation of our call to contemplative action in the world. The awareness of one another's beauty is the seedling for the birth of compassion and justice. A contemplative life can empty us and ready us to become instruments of the good. 
let us affirm our plans to continue practicing a way of beauty that makes life rich, courageous, generous, and joyful as active agents of the divine beauty in the world. Amen. Please join me in our prayer of opening. The words are on your screen. Let's pray together. Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for this moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We offer our lives in service to your creation. We dedicate ourselves to increasing beauty in this world. We commit to compassion and action. Amen. I invite you now to join Susanna and James and sing praise. I will praise you, Lord. The words will be on your screen. Yeah. 
man. Thank you, Coopers. Thank you, Beverly. Searching for beauty, our final time together. Let me pause our sharing for a minute and find my friend Shiloh. There she is. How are you this morning? How are you, Shiloh? Dad. Dad. So, Shiloh, we've had some fun these past few weeks searching for beauty. Is there one favorite thing that you've seen in creation or at home or someone that stood out to you? It's the moon. Say it louder. It's the moon. It's the what? New. The, the new? Moon. The blue, okay. Moon, M-O-O-N. Oh, the moon. Wasn't it great last week? Guys, here was so big. Amazing. Thank you, God, for a beautiful moon. Well, today we are going to hear some words from a book in the Bible called Isaiah. And in Isaiah's time, the people were waiting for some good news, kind of like all of us today. They're waiting to hear about peace and no more tears. And a messenger came and shared that good news. And what do you think the people did? Do you think they jumped up and down with joy when they heard good news? Yeah, they did. That's right. They did their happy dance. Do you have a happy dance that you like to do? I have one. It goes like this. Happy dance. Happy dance. What? Are we, all right, good, happy dance, Shiloh. Today I want you and me to help be messengers of good news so we can cause some other people to have a happy dance. Try this, try putting your hands to your mouth and saying, good news is coming. Good news is coming. Very good. You know what would even make our voices louder? A megaphone. You got a megaphone at home? You got one? I've got mine. Let's do it together. Good news is coming. Go ahead and try it. Try it again louder this time. Good news is coming. Good job. You think your neighbors heard that? You can go out after church and do it on your front porch and tell everybody good, good news is coming. Good job. So we want to share good news because good news makes other people want a happy dance. And we can share that good news, not just with our words, but with our actions with what we do <laughs> can help somebody or listen to them give them something they need like food maybe and help take care of them and i know you and your family will do that we can just make the world more beautiful and life more beautiful by sharing good news let's close with a repeat after me prayer okay shiloh so repeat after me god of goodness God of goodness. Thank you for beauty. Thank you for beauty. Thank you for good news. Thank you for good news. Help me. Help me. Help you. Help you. Bring beauty to someone. Bring beauty to someone. And be a messenger of good news. Be a messenger of good news. For the beauty of the earth. Be the beauty of the earth. Amen. Amen. Well, have fun with your megaphone and sharing good news later today. And I'm going to go back to sharing a screen. Now, here we go. How beautiful upon the mountain. Our 
reading today from Isaiah, we usually hear it around Christmas time. The people of faith in whom Isaiah writes were oppressed and exiled by their captors. <coughs> they suffered much. When Isaiah writes, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of one who brings good news, it's not the feet themselves that are necessarily beautiful, but the whole message of relief from suffering. The image of the messenger that brings good news is a cause for joy. To be a part of the restoration of love, peace, and hope is our call to unveil more beauty in the world. Watch and listen to our Lectio Divinia from Isaiah 52, 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the one who brings good news, who announces peace and brings news of happy things, and proclaims deliverance, saying to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, those who keep watch raise a cry, together they shout for joy, for they see with their own eyes Yahweh's restoration of Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for Yahweh comforts the people and redeems Jerusalem. Yahweh bears a holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. Amen. Well, I think that's the first time I've ever used funky music in worship before, but it works. Let me pause the screen share so you can see my smiling face. And if you want to put it on speaker view, feel free, or you can keep it on gallery view either way. Join me in a word of prayer. Gracious God, we hear the funk and the music and realize that good news is coming from you to all the world and through us as well. Start us with your grace and love, speak to us of eternal things and help our feet to dance. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our heart, may it all be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer, amen. <clears throat> How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of one who brings good news. Isaiah's words always make me pause and think about what happened to me back in my high school youth group. One summer evening, we were gathered in our favorite place at First Presbyterian Church in Midland, Texas. We were sitting and laying on the carpet between the first pews and the chancel steps in the sanctuary. You know, right down front where Presbyterians fear to tread. I was wearing sandals that day and my best friend Emily looked down at my feet and said out loud to the whole group, David, you have Fred Flintstone toes. And of course, everybody broke out in laughter and it was a little bit embarrassing, but you know what, she was right. My toes are short and stubby like Fred's. I've never thought of my feet as beautiful. Have you? Most of us don't like to show others our feet. For some reason, feet are more private. We don't know how each other's feet look like, much less if they're beautiful. Maybe if we practice the third sacrament and wash each other's feet, we'd see the beauty behind e laying behind our shoes. The people in Isaiah's day weren't much different. <clears throat> I don't think they found feet attractive either, unless they were wealthy and pampered. People's feet were dirty, scarred, and probably smelly because they walked on dirt roads and sandals or went barefoot. And yet in this passage, Isaiah praises the beauty of the messenger feet because of the good news shared. The messenger brought glad tidings, announced peace, and proclaimed salvation. He said, your God reigns, shout for joy, break out together in song. 
Now, obviously, they weren't in the midst of a pandemic like you and me, but the Israelites were in a tough time of transition. The messenger, who may have been the prophet, delivered this good news to people in exile. After 70 years of living in captivity in Babylon, they were finally allowed to go back home and rebuild their temple. They were being freed at last, and Isaiah was breaking this unbelievable news to them. You can imagine and feel the excitement and joy in his words back at the beginning of chapter 52. The messenger says, awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. Shake yourselves from the dust. Rise up, O captive Israel. Loose the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter Zion. The truth is we all love to hear good news and share it with others, and especially feels good during hard times. You may have watched, you may have not, but back in March of this year, John Krasinski, who's best known for his role as Jen Halpert on the sitcom The Office, created a YouTube web series called Some Good News. The show focused on upbeat and inspiring stories. It was welcome for relief for those of us looking for something positive and a flood of negative pandemic news. Krasinski highlighted feel-good stories from around the world, as well as heartwarming interviews. He even pulled off a virtual wedding and a virtual prom. The show attracted millions of viewers. In the midst of such bad news, people were drawn to his good news. The good news in Isaiah is much richer and deeper than John's. The prophet is talking about the restoration of God's people deep and lasting peace, reconciliation and salvation. This kind of good news is not short-lived, but spans generations and nations. The good news announced here is the way of peace, the way of wholeness, the way of God. What good news would you like to hear today? Are you praying for an end to this pandemic? Are you hoping for a tested, safe and effective vaccine? I think the whole world is waiting for that news. What other good news are you waiting for? Are you waiting for an end to, end to racism and white supremacy? Are you waiting for compassion and justice for black and brown people, especially those who suffer police brutality? Are you waiting for the left and the right to stop using peaceful protest for their own destructive ends? What other good news are you waiting for? Are you waiting for an end to the fear-mongering, race-baiting, and blatant lying used by politicians to divide us? Are you waiting to hear that the Republicans, Democrats, have put aside their bitter partisan politics and are now working together for the common good and not just their own? This world and our lives are full of sickness and death, fear and anxiety, intolerance and impatience, confusion and conflict. This world is in desperate need of messengers who will bring some good news. The news of healing and restoration, clarity and certainty, peace and justice. Yes, the news of hope and salvation for all. Dr. Wendy Farley, whose book, Beguiled by Beauty, inspired our worship series, says, contemplating beauty does not make us escape from the world, but draws us more deeply into it. It helps us appreciate both the beauty and the tragedy that makes us all human and fragile. It makes our hearts more open and tender to what's breaking God's heart in the world. When he says, I started my book because I needed help with my own resilience. In the face of so much disheartening news about climate change, institutional racism, political turmoil, she asked herself, how can I stay courageous? How can I keep my heart open? How can I stay interested in the world? After deep soul searching, she came to this realization. If you are nourished by the beauty of the world and the goodness of God, 
you will have more resources for accepting the truth of suffering and injustice and responding to it in whatever ways are appropriate. Dr. Farley says each of us will be more alive to some kind of suffering than others. We will be called into consolation and resistance in ways appropriate to our abilities and circumstances. The theologian and civil rights leader Howard Thurman said it this way, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go and do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Sisters and brothers, I hope this worship series has helped you come alive. Our broken and hurting world desperately needs some good news messengers. I hope you will keep looking around and noticing God's beauty in yourself and to others and in creation and in the world. Because the beauty you notice will help you experience greater compassion and commit yourself to acts of justice. <coughs> and last but not least, I hope your feet and mine become beautiful because they share the good news of Jesus Christ and Jesus' message of peace and justice, hope and healing, salvation and joy for all, now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you now to experience Visio Divinia by watching and listening to the video. I invite you now to prepare yourself for communion. And I just realized that I left my bread 
over on the counter. So give me a minute. I'm going to go get it. Let's start our time of communion together as God's people by singing this next song. The bread and wine are here. Please join Suzanne and James. The words will be on your screen. Thank you, Susanna. Let me stop screen sharing so we can see each other. The table spread by God's hand for each and every one of us. We're all invited to break bread together and to drink from the cup, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. So as God's people, gathered in all these different places, know that God's table extends out of our sanctuary, up and down the valley, into our very homes, into our kitchens and desktops and wherever we may gather ourselves. I invite you now to celebrate the gift of God's love in Christ as we break bread together. If you have bread, go ahead and break it. And as we drink the cup together, I invite you to eat and drink in Christ's name. Please join me for a prayer. Beguiled creator of heaven and earth, your love so desired a response that you formed us in your image, breathed in us the breath of life and filled us with your essence of goodness. Sometimes we lose sight of this connection to you, but your love remains constant and steadfast. Deliver us from our forgetfulness and remind us of your eternal covenant of presence. We are grateful for your son and for the gift of his life for leading us into a new way, a new way of living, a new way of acting, 
the new way of being beguiled by beauty and sharing justice and compassion with this world. Bless the bread and wine we have consumed. May it be to us the bread and body of Christ and imbued us and fill us and empower us to go out and share good news each and every day in whatever way possible through our words and deeds. And all God's people said together, amen. Let me go back to screen sharing for a moment. We'll continue our prayers together. I invite you to join together and sing our prayer song that we've been doing during our series, Look Around. When you're tired and feel you can't get through, uncertainty comes over you, just look around. When your problems seem too much to bear, unsure if there's someone who cares, just look around. Whether stranger, neighbor, family, or friend On each other in tough times we can depend Look around, kindness, love is ours to share We can see it everywhere Though it might seem like forever Look around even in the darkest night things are gonna be all right we'll get through this together just look around I invite you now to lift up your prayers as God's people. You can just wave your hand and I'll call on you and unmute you or you unmute yourself and we'll share our prayer concerns. Glenn? Yeah, I uh, am thinking about our neighbor who has a brain tumor and hoping that uh, surgery happens and that her life is better. Okay. Do you have a first name? Uh, Liz. Okay, prayers for Liz and her illness. Lord, hear our prayers. Other prayer concerns. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Dad. I'm hoping wow. that <laughs> this prayers for both of us. I'm having surgery on Wednesday and hoping that Bob will be all right and uh, on his TV meals for at least a week, <laughs> TV dinners or whatever you call them, because I won't be able to cook or bend or lift or anything like that. I'm having my adenoids removed and sinuses rotor rooter, as they say. <laughs> so right. I've done it before about 15 years ago. It was not a pleasant experience. It's uh, hard not to have lots of bleeding and then you think you're okay and it'll start all over again. And I ended up back in the hospital the last time with that. So I'm hoping that he will be all right here with a few people checking here and there while I'm under the weather for several days. Okay. All right. Well, prayers for <clears throat> Deb as she goes into surgery this week and for Bob too, uh, as they take care of one another at home. Let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. Other prayer concerns. Coming to you, Suzanne. I mean, Suzanne, yeah, go ahead. You know, it hasn't hit the news, but Tom has been watching a huge forest fire in California near the Mariposa groves near in Yosemite it 
has burned in 24 hours 110,000 acres and put about a thousand people in danger. It's near a place called Mammoth Pool, so we need to remember our first responders and these folks that are trying to be evacuated. Um, it's it's incredible. It's as bad as Los Conchas was for us. Okay. And like hit the news. All right. So prayers for all the first responders and firefighters, and for the people who live there in the California and as Amy was telling us earlier in um, Bozeman, Montana too, they have major fires going on there. So prayers for rain, for healing, for safety. Let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. Any other prayer concerns? I want to give a prayer of thanksgiving that Yvonne's back with us, so she is doing better, and we rejoice and give thanks. Good to see you, dear. Let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. Coming back to you, Deb. Unmute yourself. Power yes. of prayer. Power of a prayer is wonderful. My granddaughter did not have a brain tumor, thank the Lord. That the test uh, was done on Friday and they rushed it to make sure because they suspected she had a hereditary brain tumor that my other granddaughter died of. So we're not still not sure what's going on and she's gonna be 11 years old and she weighs 170 pounds and she's gained 80 pounds in a year. Mm. So. so something still has to be wrong, but yeah. they haven't gotten to the bottom of it yet. Okay. So prayers of Thanksgiving, it's not the brain tumor, but prayers of discernment for the doctors who are trying to figure out her condition. Lord, let's pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. Any others? Well, if not, then I invite you to join me in Finish with our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's conclude by singing our song one more time. Look around. The words of music are on your screen. Sometimes it can be hard to see Life is full of possibilities So look around Each new day is such a gift Embrace it and the life you live And look around Outstretched arms and many helping don't give up on all your dreams and all your plans. Look around, kindness, love is ours to share. We can see it everywhere. Though it might seem like forever, look around, for even in our darkest night, things are gonna be alright. We'll get through together just look around look around just look
just look around. That's what we've been doing for the past five weeks, and I hope you will continue some of these contemplative practice that catch your attention and offer you a deeper look and love of life. Looking around with our eyes or our other senses, with our very soul, is how we notice beauty in the world and in the people we encounter. And it's also how we notice the suffering that we're called to intercede in and bring compassion and healing and hope and peace. Let's join Vaughn and sing for the beauty of the earth one more time. sisters, may you recognize in your life the presence, power, and light of your soul. May you realize that you are never alone, that your soul and its brightness and belonging connects you intimately with the rhythm of the universe. May you have respect for your individuality and difference. May you realize that the shape of your soul is unique that you have a special destiny here, that behind the facade of your life, there is something beautiful and eternal happening. May you learn to see yourself with the same delight, pride, and expectation with which God sees you in every moment, now and always. Amen.
Let's conclude by listening to the prelude. Thank you. A couple of announcements. Our last Beguiled by Beauty self-study will be sent out by email later today. You can watch Marcy give an in-depth interview with Dr. Wendy Farley. Uh, and the theme this week is From Beauty to Compassion and Justice. You can do that self-study at home. We are looking for grace and gratitude stories the prompt is, what makes you thankful for our congregation? Describe an experience or a feeling about our church that you are grateful for. Um, email it or mail it to me, and we're going to collect them and use them in October for our grace and gratitude season. I'll uh, tell you that Beverly has already written one story down and sent it in to me, so please Think of some grace and gratitude stories about our congregation and send them in. Last but not least, next week we're going to start a new worship series, Being a Purple Church in the Red-Blue Divide. It'll be either three or four weeks, haven't quite decided yet, but join us for that. And now let me stop screen sharing and...